Hey kids and welcome to the Styles from the Horror Tutorial Regular Series! Yay! <laughs> Today I'm just going to talk about cameras and multiplaning. So I have this background that I did for a short film that's never getting made. I took out all the water effects because if I was going to add those in I'd want to add them in Toon Boom so I could have some ripply motions and stuff. It might actually need reflections painted because you can't just flip something like this shape and get a good reflection out of it but that's something we could work on as we went along if we were actually using this background for something productive. First thing you need to have every single layer in a group which is not the most convenient thing but you just want to have each one and I only have one layer in each of these groups. They claim you can have more than one, but it never works for me. So maybe there's a special trick to getting that to work. You have each of your layers that you want in a specific folder, and you can name them something functional because you're not a monster. And it's pretty simple. You're gonna hit your import images, which is probably over here. I don't know why my bar migrated. Put it back over there. Usually it's, it's over in this thing. But you can also file, import images, and now that'll, that'll do the same thing as this button here. Beep. Then you find the location of the file you want. I've already found it so you don't have to look through my folders of hideous sketches that I've been doing lately. You can leave it on single layer because when you use import a Photoshop document it'll actually give you a second options box. So I'm going to keep all this the same as it is because that's fine. These, these are all things I want and I'm going to hit OK. And now it's going to multi-layer image import settings. So even though we said single layer here, we could separate the layers here. Separated layers, we're going to just keep the transparency straight because we want the transparency to continue existing. And there you go, we got our nice background. Now I'm going to select all of them and add a peg. So down here in your little box, you've got this got like a circle-y thing with a dot on it, a plus sign. Well, that, that'll add pegs. So there you go, they all got pegs. I'm going to select my composite and, and hit this button here, which is order up. Boop. And it's going to give me some settings about how I want things ordering, spacing, and stuff like that. But the regular ordering works pretty well. And then if I want to add a master peg, the fastest way is just to group this because it'll give you a little import box and then go back to your group. Control G by the way and then ungroup which doesn't have a hotkey and now it's got a master peg without having to plug in stuff because I, I didn't get time for that. Now I'm just going to set up my background and make it a little bigger than my space because we're going to do a little camera move. Maybe we'll start it over here and we'll just pan it and you can scale each of these if you want to change the size. All the things you want to do with drawing node, you could throw a peg on there and do that sort of stuff. And now, because we have a 3D camera, it will go into a perspective view, and you see everything's super duper flat, and we can go into our node library, and we can grab a camera and pull that in. This is one of the big things that people like to gush on about Tubu is that it has this 3D camera. So we can grab our camera, we can use all of our animation tools to just move our camera around, so we can do pans like that, we can use or scale to zoom in and zoom out. But because it's a 3D camera, we can set this here. Well, first 3D path is a little bit better for a camera, I think, because then it's going to give you that natural curves that we talked about in the peg episode. But we can also enable 3D on our camera. So if we go into our top view, and I put it down here so I can have everything open at the same time, um, you can see we've got a little camera visual here. So when we're zooming out and we're zooming in, you can see the actual field of the camera, how far it is, and of course, there's some options here, angle and stuff, near plane, far plane, all kinds of options that nobody ever touches. We usually just use this thing here. So because we have this top plane and our 3D options, what we can do is grab our background. I'm going to scale my background up. But then we can also use this tool to maintain size. So it's a little box and a big box. So if we grab that and we push this back in our view, let me get my coordinates control points out. So now it's minus 22 back. And this is one of the places where putting huge numbers on your Z depth is not too bad. One thing that you really should not do is rotate the camera away from the zero. On some shows, they say if there's a 3D background because you can't import 3D objects into Toon Boom, it's better to move the city or the, the background than to rotate the camera this way. So now the camera is at an angle. Instead of being perpendicular to the scene, it's at an angle. And when you're importing things this way and you're setting your character so that it's on an angle and all that kind of stuff, often you get Z problems because those tiny increments of Z that work really well when things are set to zero don't work very well when they're rotated against the camera like this. So you might get 
character's eyes going to the back of their head or like weird just weird stuff's gonna happen if you rotate that way so i don't recommend it also this way not great um just anything that makes it not perpendicular to the to canvas anymore it's, it's not it's not your best bet so now i can take these really far back ones i'm going to turn off the water because that's something i'm going to add later and i'm just going to pull this back and you can see even though this is now really far back it's maintaining the size that you initially gave it because you're using this tool if you were just to use this one so here i'm going to grab these guys uh, this one and this one those are the next ones back if i move them using just the z then you can see that it's scaling and you're getting lots of problems. So this is the super best tool. And the farther away from the camera something is, the less it's going to move when you do a pan. So if you don't want something to move very much at all, then you want to move it back really far. And I'm totally guessing on these selections, so they might be totally off, who knows. And I like to select from the network. You can select from the camera view. I just find it so much easier, especially if you take the time, say, okay, these are my two back ones. We're just gonna, we're gonna move this one. We don't even want him. We're going to put these guys over here and you can organize these in whatever way makes visual sense to you. And now these ones in the very foreground, I'm going to actually move these ones closer to the camera instead of back because another thing that's really good to do is if you have wherever you have your characters you want to keep that at zero so that your characters don't have to have additional z information and this is something that never happens characters have 25 they're back 25 and the z axis and just, oh it's so much of a pain if you have to add in effects after the character animators have put their and then sometimes the characters are on two different levels. So you have one character that's back 25 and one character is only back 10. And just uh, you should have, pay attention to this guy, man. So for this, for our even sake, we'll say there's a guy going to be sitting on the beach here. Or maybe there's a guy in the water. But we're going to have this area be the zero. This is So anything that's closer, we're going to move closer. Everything that's farther, we're going to move farther. That's pretty much it. That's that's done now. I'm going to grab my camera. And now if we move, we're instantly getting free multiplaning. Hooray! And if we want this guy, let's say we want to pan a little bit farther. Move this guy over. All right, so now we're getting cheap multiplaning. Looks like 2D, 3D, 2.5D for very little work. So down here, uh, I haven't mentioned these, but you have some little visual options. So there's, there's your little light table you can turn on and off if you're into that sort of thing, if you're into buttons. Current drawing on top also sits down here. Camera mask. This guy just puts a black box around it. So instead of having to actually use your flowers to render out something, if you want to just make sure that your framing is working and that everything's kind of staying where it should, you got your safe area, which it just goes with the resolution of your scene. I'm not sure if there's a way to actually change it. So this would give you like a three by four ratio with a high def screen, which would be convenient. I don't know. Put the motion queen, queen on your camera and now you've got oh, that highlights yellow for some reason. Now you can see your little magical scene of three dimensionality. So here's our award winning shot. And the bigger the camera move, the more distortion you're going to get, like the more your trick stops holding up. So this area over here is not giving me exactly what I want. So I might want to move this one back a little bit so it's moving closer to what this is moving just because it's kind of seesawing in and out. Of course, the only thing to keep in mind is if you're drawing a background like this, then you want to draw behind your objects. So when pieces are removed, then there's obviously something behind it because otherwise your multiplane is going to fall apart real fast. So I've drawn behind each of these guys. I can just take them off one by one. So you don't have to go too far with it. This one, I, I knew these weren't going to be moving too much, but I just gave it a little, just enough so that there would definitely be something behind there if it moved out. So without our framing on, this is what it looks like. Things are just flying around in space, but I mean, it looks okay when you're... Uh when you're actually working with it. In here, if I were going to add effects, let's say I had to do some water ripples around the edges of these uh, pieces of water, I'd want my ripples around here to be at the same Z plane as this object here. So I could actually use the peg on the effects and I'd hook it up there and then I could just plug it in wherever. Super keen water ripples. <laughs> and now our effects are gonna move along with the piece that it's actually attached to. Because if this was not plugged in and you spent the time doing all your effects so that they look super sweet, 
and then you move it, you're gonna get this. So this is why I also recommend wherever your character's standing at zero, you can just import your character. He's going for a walk on the beach, so he's super happy. And then when the camera's moving, your character is going to move at a sensible pace with the place that he's standing. So if he's standing on this rock back here, we plug that guy in like that, have to animate him down like this. So now you're getting a ton of information like that to get him over here. So now you've got X, Y, he's back 12 and a half in the Z plane. He's his, you know, so it's starting to get a little bit messy. So if you can, if you can keep where the character's playing at zero, that's really going to help you. Obviously you have characters on different layers. That's not going to be able to happen, but it will save yourself a little bit of trouble to at least keep the main characters as zero as possible. Wee. Hello, mister. He's really big. <laughs> Those trees, like, if you look at the trees on the hill, like, he's way, he's a super big man. Weep. There you go. Now he's just an above average sized man. <laughs> so hopefully that helps you guys. And you can play with uh, multi-planning a little bit. Just like a stage. So even if you just had a little play that was on a stage. Wee, 3D, you guys. Look, I'm DreamWorks. <laughs> So even if you just had a little stage, you could you could break your stage up and then your camera moves would look a little bit cooler. So this is a pretty simple one. But if you know anybody could use it, please share, like, subscribe, all those things internet people ask you to do. And I'll see you in the next video.